Hi, I'm Leonard Malton, lifelong Disney fan, Disney buff, something of a Disney historian, and I'm the lucky guy who gets to open the box, the box of the Silly Symphony Collection for the first time. This is so cool, I get to open the first copy of this incredible box set. We get rid of the shrink wrap, lift this very heavy box. Ooh, don't. So what have we got here? We've got a beautiful box, a slip case. Oh, with the original Disneyland Records logo. The logo of the Silly Symphonies. Disneyland Records. Oh, look at this, a nice gold leaf. This is an artist proof. AP. So it's not one of the numbered sets. All right. So what do we have in here? These are the codes that you can use to download this. If you're so square that you're not going to play the vinyl, <laughs> or if you're on the go and you want to listen to them digitally, you can do that by downloading these codes. All right, very handy. But now we get to the good stuff. All right, let's see. Let's get the first disc out of here. And how do we know it's the first disc? Well, because it's got the skeleton dance, the first Silly Symphony. This was where it all began, 1929. Oh, what a use is this. So handsome. Look at this. It's one of my all-time favorite cartoons. And I could probably hum the score by heart, but I won't do that for you. And this, there are liner notes here. This is a gatefold, you know, two-disc set here. The liner notes are by my friends Russell Merritt and J.B. Kaufman, who are the world's authorities on the Silly Symphonies. And they know what they're talking about, and they give you great context, I'm sure, and background. And on the back is something that is unprecedented. I mean that in Disney history. The cartoons never credited anybody. Least of all, the composers, starting with Carl Stalling, the a friend of Walt Disney's from Kansas City who came up with the idea for the Silly Symphonies and composed the music and sort of strung the music together for Skeleton Dance, right up through Lee Harleen, one of the great Disney composers, Albert Hay Malott, who was actually a prominent classical composer of the period. Well, all those credits are cited here, and you'll learn every snippet of music that is used on the soundtrack of each Silly Symphony. And that's never been done before, and it never been made public before this way. Oh, great. Beautiful sleeve with the original one-sheet posters. For the, they did an individual poster for each one. People don't understand, why would they do posters for shorts, for cartoons? When these took off in the 1930s, people were excited that these were on the program. You go to the theater, and you wouldn't just be seeing a feature film, you'd be seeing a feature film and some short subjects and, some, and at least one cartoon. And when, when it was a Disney cartoon, that was really special. That was an event. That got on the marquee sometimes. That's how important it was. And here's the vinyl with the old Disneyland Records logo. I love that. That's what I would call nostalgia. Because I grew up with those records. And I'm sure a lot of you did too. Here is disc two. Look, th this design is just wonderful. This starts with monkey melodies and takes us up to the spider and the fly, 1931. Illustrations from each short. It's just incredible someone would do this and do this with such care. Volume three announces the beginning of color, because this is from Flowers and Trees. This cover heralds the arrival of Technicolor, because not only was Flowers and Trees the first silly symphony in color, it was the first Technicolor cartoon anywhere. Walt Disney took a chance on what was called Three Color Technicolor. This was the short he did it with. He'd started production in black and white, started all over again in color, and it was so impressive that the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences initiated a new award for Best Animated Short Subject just so they could honor this short. Okay, so we have the end of the black and white on this volume, the beginning of color. Here is volume four with The Three Little Pigs, the most successful, not only the most successful Silly Symphony short, one of the most successful short subjects ever, ever. Walt Disney had no idea that it was going to be as popular as it was. And that song took off. That song, Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf, became kind of an anthem for the Depression, uh, sort of defying the Depression for many people. There's Old King Cole, Lullaby Land, The Pied Piper. I like that one a lot. 
The Night Before Christmas, another gorgeous color cartoon. Grasshopper and the Ants, which has another good song, The World Owes Me a Living, sung by Pinto Colvig, the voice of Goofy. And there's a sequel. Walt Disney didn't like doing sequels, but he did one to The Three Little Pigs called The Big Bad Wolf and a couple of others to follow. Here is volume five, which introduces Donald Duck, the only major Disney character to come out of the Silly Symphonies. Most of these cartoons were one-shot affairs, and we never saw those characters again. But Donald was featured in The Wise Little Hen, mostly because Walt fell in love with the voice, Clarence Nash's funny voice. And they sort of attached the voice to that character. This is one of my special favorites, The Flying Mouse. A beautiful, beautiful, very dramatic and emotional cartoon. There's the Goddess of Spring, Tortoise and the Hare. If you look at the Goddess of Spring, you see how difficult it was for them to animate a realistic human figure, especially a female figure. They did pretty well, but they kept improving. Walt made sure his, his artists and animators took art lessons right on the studio campus. And by the time they were ready to do Pinocchio and they animated the Blue Fairy, you see how far they'd come from that example there. Here's volume six with another of my all-time favorites, Music Land. This is a great cartoon. Every time I screen this anywhere or watch it being shown, the audience just goes crazy for it. It's great. There's Who Killed Cock Robin, which has a good song, too. Music Land, which is fantastic. Three Orphan Kittens. Cock of the Walk. Three Little Wolves, another sequel to Three Little Pigs. And Elmer Elephant. Again, they've paid such attention to detail in putting these together. Volume 7, Ah, the Tortoise and the Hare. Some people think that Max Hare in this cartoon was kind of an inspiration for Bugs Bunny over at the Warner Brothers cartoon studio. And several of the Warner's people say that that is quite likely true. Everybody in the animation world was watching what Walt Disney was doing because he was so far ahead of everybody else. They tried to find a way to catch up, and it was hard for them to do that. The Country Cousin, another milestone cartoon. Mother Pluto, More Kittens, Woodland Cafe, and Little Hiawatha. Great cartoons. And by this time, by the time of these in 1936, the studio is getting ready to make Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And Walt is really using these cartoons as a kind of a research and development lab to get his people ready for something that would be even more ambitious than these cartoon shorts full-length animated feature. Finally, ah, uh, The Ugly Duckling. This is the only Silly Symphony. It's a remake of an earlier Silly Symphony. They did a version of this, which you'll find early on in 1931. They remade it in color. And Disney always had a fondness for Hans Christian Andersen, going right up to Little Mermaid and Frozen. But here we have, these are, these are each one a gem. The Old Mill. The Old Mill is the one first used the multiplane camera as a kind of a test run for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and Pinocchio. Wink and Blink and a Nod, an exquisite cartoon. Moth and the Flame, Merbabies, Farmyard Symphony, Mother Goose Goes Hollywood, filled with caricatures of popular movie stars of the day. You can give yourself a test or test your friends on how many of the people they recognize. Catherine Hepburn is little Bo Peep looking for her lost sheep. If you don't recognize her, you won't have an easy time getting anybody else. But if you know Catherine Hepburn, that's a good start. The Practical Pig, yet another sequel to The Three Little Pigs, and The Last Silly Symphony, The Beautiful Ugly Duckling, which brings me to tears every time, never fails, and a beautiful design for this final volume. That is volume eight. Eight incredible albums in this beautiful slipcase. All the tracks have been restored by Randy Thornton the Grammy-winning producer who's done so many wonderful Disney albums and soundtracks. He's a perfectionist, and everyone knows that. And that's why you're going to be pleased with what you hear, I'm sure. And this music has never been released before, certainly not in its entirety. All 75 soundtracks for the Silly Symphonies cartoons covering 10 years' time. I can't believe somebody went to all this trouble to do it, not just do it, but do it right. Do it with 
TLC, real tender, loving care. So that everybody who cares about Disney, who cares about animated cartoons, and great film music has something to cherish here. This is just wonderful.